More than 95% of Karabakh Armenians left for Armenia. A United Nations mission, which arrived in Karabakh on October 1st to 2nd, officially confirmed that there were no incidences of violence against civilians. Along with reorientation towards the West, Armenia is developing relations with Iran. Will Yerevan be able to get rid of Russian influence? What purpose is pursued by France and Iran in the South Caucasus? As Front gives an explanation. According to the Armenian Prime Minister's spokesman, 100,625 Karabakh Armenians left for Armenia as of the 3rd of October. On October 2nd, the last buses carrying them to Armenia were escorted by the Russian military contingent in Karabakh. Armenians leaving the city polluted, purposely leaving rubbish in the streets. The footage, which shows that all the flags of the former illegal government of Armenian separatists have been lowered in Kankandi, is being spread throughout social networks. On October 1st, a UN mission to Karabakh visited Lachin checkpoint. The press release on the results of the mission reported that there were no cases of violence against civilians as well as damage to civilian infrastructure, cultural and religious buildings. This was confirmed by the representative of the UN Secretary General and the US State Department spokesperson, Matthew Miller. Assistant to the President of Azerbaijan, Hikmet Hajiyev, reminded a number of international publications about the ethnic cleansing of the Azerbaijani population of Karabakh in the 1990s. Now, Azerbaijan provides safe passage across the border to those Armenians who decided to leave the territory of Karabakh of their own free will. This was confirmed by Al Jazeera's report from Konkandi on October 1st. More than a million Azerbaijanis who had to leave their homes 30 years ago, so now they're going to make preparations for them to come back. And all those people from the ethnic Armenian community who remain here are going to live side by side with them as Azerbaijani citizens. As noted in the report, the Karabakh Armenians left on a voluntary basis. The Red Cross representatives did not record any cases when they were forced to leave their homes. In the last video, we reported that Azerbaijan launched a portal through which the Karabakh Armenian population can register and receive the necessary assistance. The acceptance of offline applications for the initial registration of Karabakh Armenians also began in Kankendi on the 1st of October. Radio and television in Azerbaijani, Armenian and Russian languages were launched in the region. On October 2nd, the presidential administration of Azerbaijan released a statement noting Azerbaijan's plans for reintegration in the legal and administrative spheres. It also includes the right to preserve culture, religion, and the protection of cultural and religious monuments. Despite the dissolution of the so-called separatist government in Karabakh, there are still tensions on the Armenian-Azerbaijani border. On September 30th, an Azerbaijani serviceman was killed as a result of shelling launched from Armenian territory. And on October 2nd, the Armenian armed forces shelled Azerbaijani army positions in the Kalbajar region on the border. On the same day, a joint Russian-Azerbaijani patrol was shelled from sniper weapons in Kankendi. The so-called ex-president of the Armenian separatists in Karabakh, Arayik Harutyunyan, and the commander of the illegal Armenian armed formations, Jalal Harutyunyan declared in the international search. They are responsible for rocket attacks on civilians in the Azerbaijani city of Ganja and the killing of civilians during the Second Karabakh War in 2020. More than 300 Armenian separatists who committed serious crimes in Karabakh are also put on the international wanted list. On September 29th, the influential Armenian newspaper Hraparak stated that the so-called ex-head of the government of Armenian separatists in Karabakh Vardanyan and ex-head of the foreign ministry, David Babayan, were handed over to Azerbaijan by Pashinyan. The author notes that, in this way, the prime minister punishes people who oppose him. It is interesting that on September 30th, a procession in support of Vardanyan, the Kremlin's protege in Karabakh, was held in Yerevan. Along with reorientation towards the West, Armenia is developing relations with Iran. Parliament Speaker Alan Simonyan recently called Iran Armenia's partner. On October 1st, Secretary of the Security Council of Armenia Armen Grigoryan arrived in Tehran, where he met with his Iranian counterpart Ali Akbar Ahmadian, 
Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hossein Amir Abdullahian, and Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi. In turn, the Iranian Red Crescent Society will send 50 tons of humanitarian aid to Armenia for the Armenian population of Karabakh. France also continues to influence the politics of the South Caucasus. On September 29th, French politician Pierre Vatin announced that the France-Azerbaijan Parliamentary Friendship Group in the French National Assembly suspends its activities and relations with the Azerbaijan-France Friendship Group of the Azerbaijani Parliament. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, Catherine Colonna, is expected to pay an official visit to Armenia on October 3rd. And the French Ministry of Defense has announced that the country has opened a defense mission in Armenia which allows it to examine Armenia's needs in terms of defense and protection. This is particularly evident in light of the proven fact of secret deliveries of French APCs to Armenia in May of this year. Despite the fact that the loss of Karabakh means a decline in Russian leverage over Armenia, Armenia's structural dependency on Russia in strategic sectors of its economy is still great. On September 29th, this was noted by the British think tank Chatham House. In addition, according to the influential newspaper Ashark al Ausat, Russia is Armenia's top trading partner, and it is home to an estimated 1 million Armenians. Thus, the US and the EU will not easily replace Moscow as Armenia's main sponsors, states the author of the article. The Caucasus and Middle East is closer to Europe and US than it seems at first glance. Subscribe and click on the bell in order to be informed of the main events. See you soon. Thank you.